Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for the OrthoFi Industry Expert Series. I'm Marla Merritt, and our guest tonight is Michelle Shimon. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Marla. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to hear what you're going to teach us tonight. And um, I'll be introducing Michelle in just a moment. Um, just a few things to get started with. First of all, housekeeping. We're going to um, post questions in the Q&A instead of the chat. So our team will be monitoring those questions and then probably feeding those to Michelle toward the end of the webinar. So, so stick around we, um, and we'll get to those questions toward the end, but make sure um, as, you, as you think of questions as Michelle's talking, be sure to, to put those in the Q&A. Um, just a little background on the industry expert series. You know, OrthoFi did a meeting earlier this year, um, the Nexus series, and uh, we really focused on the winds of change that are affecting our industry and how it's so important for practices to build windmills and not walls. Um, the winds of change that we focused on during that meeting were um, staffing concerns, the economy, consolidation, and competition. So throughout that meeting, we really focused on those four things. Um, just, you know, kind of a side plug, we'll be hosting another Nexus meeting next February, where we'll, we'll really be digging into a whole new series of um, concerns. But that uh, Nexus, the, the topics that we covered, we really thought we put together such a great program that it was really important that we took it to the, the rest of the industry because if you weren't able to attend that meeting, you, you really missed a lot of, a lot of great information. Uh, Michelle Shimon was one of our speakers and just um, brought some, some just tremendous content to the, the attendees of that conference. And so we asked her to, um, you know, cover that session again. And, and now with the experience of a few more months in, you know, what is this looking like? So just a little bit about Michelle. Um, Michelle has been in orthodontics for 33 years. She is the owner of Shimon Consulting. So she started that business about 12 years ago and now has a you know, full team of other consultants that work alongside her to just really help um, practices literally all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, they've seen you know, the best and the worst. So they've seen it all and they've been able to really help practices who are struggling to rise above, practices who are doing great to become even better. So um, we have a lot to learn from Michelle. I love always adding a, a few personal touches. Michelle's an identical twin. She's definitely petrified of sharks. So <laughs> that's um, always a, a fun fact. So, you know, maybe we'll hear a little more about that. And she loves to golf. Uh, Michelle, we, we couldn't be more happy that you've joined us tonight. And Thank I'm you. just going to let you take it away. Thank you so much, Marla. You're a, a dear friend. And I just really want to start out by thanking the team at OrthoFi. And those of you that are joining us tonight, I work with a lot of different companies and uh, it is just so refreshing to partner alongside a company like OrthoFi and OrthoBank that really are committed to your success. They really truly will take the time and the effort to provide you what you need, uh, hence these series of webinars. So I'm honored to participate and to be able to hopefully provide you some pearls and some insight, but most importantly today, my goal is to inspire an excitement and an enthusiasm in you, no matter the position or role that you have within the practice, to really elevate your skill set, your patient experience, and understand how our patient expectations and preferences have adjusted and changed especially over the last, you know, four years. So I'm here to provide you some insight with that. And without further ado, we'll get started on this. But to build off of what Marla was talking about with the winds of change, I want us in understanding and really looking to tap into that passion about what we provide our patients to understand that when the winds of change blow, some people, well, let's translate this to practices, build walls while others build windmills. And windmills are really power and energy. So don't build walls because this is what you've always done within your practice. That video that we just all got to watch is something that is really powerful. As a business analyst, 
that addresses every part of the orthodontic practice. I really can highly respect and endorse something like OrthoFi because of what they provide the practice from point A to point B all around. Today, we're going to talk a lot about what it provides your patients, but do not overlook uh, really what it provides for your entire practice comprehensively. So uh, I often say the most expensive words in business are we've always done it that way. I hope tonight to inspire you to recognize a change, sorry, in how a change in how we can understand what our patients are looking for. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about tiered treatment options and pricing and how that allows you to serve more patients that directly meets your patient's unique needs and desires. I'll discuss the importance of implementing treatment options in order to provide solutions for your patients that may not be interested or able to do full comprehensive treatment. We have to really be setting up the options within your practice to be able to meet more patients where they are and have options that meet their needs. We'll talk about reasons why this strategy is really going to be an important part of your future growth opportunities within your practice while providing a better optimized pricing structure for your patients. And as the earlier video stated as well, so many fantastic options to also protect your practice and collect all the revenue owed. Uh, for the treatment coordinators here, who would not want to increase our, our conversion rate by 18%? I don't know a treatment coordinator that would say they wouldn't want to increase it by 18%. And oftentimes there's a lot of opportunity for that. So let's dive into how we can arm you with the information you need to be able to serve your patients where they are. Let's start by talking a little bit about the history. We're gonna go back a little bit. As Marla said, I've been in the industry for 33 years. I'm an RDA and a clinical trainer and have worked in every position within the practice. So I have really fully experienced the dramatic changes from 30 years ago to 20 years ago to even five years ago, how our industry is changing. And I'm sure as you are currently experiencing the last four years seems like a whirlwind of change. It really seems to be going quickly and technology is a tool that is launching that for us. So how can we capitalize and really take full advantage of what the opportunities we have available for us? So as we look at what the history was, we've typically seen patients seek the orthodontist's opinions or recommendations on what the best most ideal solution for their orthodontic problems. Since these solutions were part of the orthodontist portfolio of treatment success, we saw most orthodontists not even offer, let alone allow, if you will, a compromised or lesser of a treatment option because doctors felt this was really a part of their portfolio. This is why many of the DIY solutions grew like they did because they provided a solution that the patients were looking for. So the pricing and the treatment structures were based on what the patient wanted. Ideally, we'd look to understand the patient's needs and value points and look to influence their direction of choice. I'm gonna give you tools for that tonight as well. Um, we'll guide you through and arm you with how you can be successful at that. But what I wanna do is ask you this question, and this can be a really tricky question, and I ask how authentic and true your answer is as a practice as a whole, which means the buy-in from every team member for these solutions. Will you provide limited treatment options based on your patient's needs, desires, and value? So now I say limited in this question here, but we are talking about tiered treatment options. So in this ability, we also have the option to be able to include a higher level. I'm looking at the center of the lane, typical treatment recommendations, and an option that might meet your patient where your patient is, and an option that might be all-inclusive platinum option. So that is a way also, especially depending on where your practice is and who your patients are, you could have an ability to add uh, revenue generation uh, in your new patient exams and within your treatment options for your patients. 
So let's dive into what this process is. Orthodontic consumer needs really have evolved with patients becoming increasingly focused on aesthetics, comfort, and convenience. Patients are seeking orthodontic treatment that is less noticeable and aesthetically pleasing. This has led to an increase, of course, in the demand for clear brackets, tooth colored braces, clear aligners, or lingual solutions. Patients are also looking for comfort because they're looking for fewer appointments and shorter treatment times, which also contributes to their need for convenience. When we can understand what the technology that we have available to us provides our patients, your entire team has the buy-in and the why behind what it provides patients, you can be extremely successful at influencing your patient's choices to not only choose you, but to choose your recommended treatment modalities as well. Patients are seeking orthodontic treatment that makes use of the latest technological advancements, such as, of course, the digital scanning and 3D printing. They are looking for faster, more accurate treatment. However, patients are also looking for technology to serve them in their process, which means just like what you saw on that earlier video, how can we make it as easy and convenient as possible for your patients to make the decision to choose you by interacting at home with a spouse that wasn't present at the exam and being able to have their own choices and decisions in how they want to invest in their smile and then fully make that commitment in the comfort of their own home. This is technology that your patients are looking for, and they have experienced it over the last couple of years. Their demands are not going backwards. Practices I see are because they're like, oh, we don't need all these digital solutions that we had a couple of years ago. Your patients experience the convenience and the wonder of what that provided them. Their expectations are not going to go backwards. So we have to recognize that patients are looking for orthodontic treatment that is also affordable and accessible with flexible payment options and clear pricing. Patients don't want to feel tricked. They don't want to have some sales feel or some sales training when somebody is talking to them about the investment presentation. And we'll go over that in a short time. What your patient wants is accessibility, affordability, flexibility, and they want an interactive process where they feel like they have control over it. This is actually funny that Marla shared the story, but in regards to these changing consumer needs, orthodontic providers need to offer diverse treatment options and to be utilizing advanced technology to meet these demands of patients. And I want to share with you, my friend Dino tells a story about the waves of change. And so if you think about it, it the story resonated with me because I live in Hawaii part of the time and I love watching the waves and the surfers you will not catch me in the water because of that detrimental fear of sharks. It's unfortunate because it's some of the prettiest water. However, the fear is real. But if you think about it and watching these surfers and the waves are coming up and they're all ready and they're prepared and they're looking behind them and they're deciding when the absolute best time to start paddling is. Most of the time the surfers can start paddling too late and the wave just kind of comes and passes them by. The really good surfers that know how to read the waves paddle at the right time, they catch the wave and they ride it all the way in. So think about the waves as waves of change and what our industry is doing. Are we going to miss that wave or are we actually going to be able to understand it before it gets to us and be ready and prepared to fully capitalize on what it's going to provide to our practice? As I just said, the last four years, we've seen a massive shift in orthodontic consumer choices, driven by advancements in technology, changes in consumer preferences, and shifts in the land, uh, healthcare landscape. There's been a much greater focus on patient comfort and aesthetics because patients are increasingly seeking orthodontic treatment that's comfortable and minimally invasive. invasive. Um, they have a growing interest in teledentistry because, again, they experienced this convenience and don't want to now not have it available to them. 
I recently had a follow-up appointment with a doctor and I was on the road and couldn't do it. And they said, hey, let's Zoom and let's talk. I'm like, absolutely, let's do this. And so we can't be afraid to meet our patients where they are. Uh, the pandemic accelerated the growth of teledentistry and patients are increasingly and continually seeking what the virtual consultations, the remote monitoring, their expectations of care have shifted and they're not going back. I still see, believe it or not, doctors and team members say, well, our patients are different and our patients like to come see us or they really want to come in and see us. And I challenge that. That is much more about the practice than it is about your patient's needs. So it doesn't, we don't have to go dramatic to this side and dramatic to this side. We can be in the middle where we're meeting our patients with the needs that, and expectations that they are seeking. They are also um, recognizing the, that there are benefits to early treatment. They're just more educated in this area. These changes reflect broader trends in the healthcare industry and reflect the evolving needs and preferences of your patients. So as a result, orthodontic practices absolutely must adapt their offerings, their marketing strategies to stay ahead of the curve and to meet those evolving needs of your patients. As Marla said, if you have questions, you can type them into the Q&A as we start to get into the meat of what I'm referencing this evening or you can write them down and, and I'll uh, look forward to the end time together where we can really talk about these. This is an area that my firm specializes in within the work that we do for our clients. And I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the psychology of influence. I don't like the word sales, nobody does. I like the word influence. We have to recognize that our patients are coming to you, actively coming to you and seeking a solution to their orthodontic problem. Do you have the passion? Are you going to exude the passion to your practice being the greatest solution to that orthodontic problem? I often ask team members or treatment coordinators if they are binge watching a show. So think about it for a minute. If you're binge watching a show, what that show is. I know I can actively say um, the show that I've been binge watching and rewatching is Yellowstone and all the prequels and everything. I love it. But if I ask you that, most likely, if you are binge watching a show, your face would light up. You would launch into the excitement of that show and why you love it and why you watch it. And you would influence me to seek out that show and to find out where that passion is coming from. And I want to really inspire this out of every team member in your practice for the services that you provide and what it provides your patients. Think about the impact that you would have during every patient interaction. So when we are doing a new patient exam, how we understand how our patients' needs or language of currency has adjusted is for us to be able to read, recognize, and adapt our case presentations to the needs of this patient by understanding their value points, understanding what they are looking for and understanding what their currency of language is. So I put some questions on here. These are some really important questions that I don't want you to be afraid to ask. Your patients have sought you out. They have come into your office. So to ask these questions simply allow you to understand at a deeper level how you can serve your patient better. Ask your patients, what are you looking for in an orthodontist? Their questions are going to arm you with their language of currency and how you can meet their specific needs. It might be, I'm looking for the cheapest option. I'm looking for the fastest option. I'm looking for a doctor that I can trust. I'm looking for a conservative doctor. I'm just looking for an experience that we feel good and happy about. Whatever their answer might be is something that allows you to adapt your case presentation to this specific patient. Ask what is most important to your patients with their orthodontic treatment and what is most important to your patient with their smile. Again, that is the instructional playbook of what your patient is looking for from you as a solution to their orthodontic challenges. And I want you to recognize that patients, I don't know why this is happening, I'm sorry. Back here, there you go. 
Um, I want you to recognize that, thanks for your patience, you gotta love technology, which is part of it, but that we're not grabbing patients or seeking patients off the sidewalk. They have come to you for a solution. So there shouldn't be any fear in us wanting to ask more questions. I often, if a patient will say, you know, oh, that won't work for me, or oh, I don't like that, or I don't want to do that, almost 100% of the time, team members will just fly right past that statement and overlook it. And they use that statement to then influence with their own perception how the rest of that exam is going to go. Stop yourself for a moment and ask the patient, tell me more about that. For instance, aligners, this ha can happen a lot. If we put brackets and aligners and we're talking about treatment options available, a parent might say, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Think about why they might say that. Maybe their hygienist said they're not a candidate. Maybe their neighbor has had a bad experience, or maybe their interpretation is that it costs more. So if you simply say, okay, and then brief the doctor, oh, mom doesn't want aligners, but you don't know more about that. If you ask the question to say, mom, tell me more about that. You're able to really get to the meat of why this parent has a strong feeling about that. And you can use that as an opportunity to potentially even re-educate the family differently. If it's the hygienist, oh, I'm not a candidate. Great. Our, our doctor is an expert. We do this every day, all day. We do very complex cases with it. And in fact, we will check to see if you are an expert in our office. I mean, a candidate in our office. Also, a mom might say, well, you know, I think that's probably costs more. Nope, actually in our office, it doesn't. So it's a great opportunity for you to be able to recalibrate and re-educate the parent, removing the perception or what their interpretation might be. So when we talk about, as we move into the tiered treatment options and delivering what our patients are looking for, we want to look at a few factors. Some of the dependent factors include the patient's needs and preferences, and those needs and preferences are influenced by their budget, the complexity of treatment, of course, and the type of treatment being recommended. Now, I want to take for a moment, I really want to celebrate all of you, all of us in our industry, because I have noticed a great increase in changing the word options of treatment to recommended. I've really, I, I hear this everywhere now. It's, it's great. Continue with that. I mean, I also want to challenge you to elevate your ability and, and change the word to prescribed. That is a very powerful word that your doctor it edifies and elevates your doctor as that authority to the solution. It's a prescription. Doctor is prescribed to this treatment. We do have this option and this op option for you but challenge yourself to change that word recommendation to prescription. So when we talk about the dependent factors for these tiered treatment options, this is what should drive your treatment options available to your patients. So my challenge, I would want you to write the plan, slay the script and arm your team, every single one of them. Go back to a couple of slides when I was talking about the passion that each team member exudes. When I'm in an office, I often will go to different team members, not the treatment coordinator. The treatment coordinator is typically the one that is strong and confident in the messaging and understanding of every process and modality that your practice specializes in. But when I go into clinical team members or administrative team members, oftentimes it's not as strong confident of a message as I would get from a treatment coordinator. Think about what it would be if you had every single team member that understood the plan and really was confident and successful at slaying the script or the education to your patients. This is a really important part to what you are experiencing with your team members. You have to get their buy-in. They have to understand the why. So as we dive into this, we have to recognize that most consumers statistically choose the mid-range option. Um, and however, some patients opt for a more friend, budget-friendly option, such as traditional metal braces or a premium option or platinum option, such as lingual solution or a liner solution, really depending on their specific needs and preferences. That might include gum contouring, and that might include bleaching, and that might include retainers for life. It's 
really also worth noting that the popularity of different tiered options can vary by region and demographics and can change over time with your patient preferences and your technological advancements that continue to evolve as well. So understand what those parameters are with your tiered options that you create with your entire team. And then you have the ability to tap into each team member as educators and influencers for your patients. The psychology of influencing a patient's choice by meeting their specific needs and value points is a complex process that involves understanding the patient's motivations and concerns and presenting treatment options that align with their value points and priorities, their language of currency, if you will. Um, it works with their lifestyle and needs. I say it doesn't just fit into, but it enhances their lifestyle and it solves their orthodontic concerns. Let's talk about some key principles of psychology that should be used to influence patients' choices. Uh, orthodontic teams should listen to the patient's concerns and understand what those motivation, motivators and priorities are, and then use this information to tailor their prescriptions, their recommendations, and their explanations. Orthodontic teams should educate patients about the different treatment options available for them as well, including the pros and cons of each option, and then help them understand how each option would align with their specific needs and values. Maybe you present an option that straightens the teeth but does not fully correct their bite. Talk about and discuss, you'll have a pretty smile, your social six will look nice, and you can talk about my concerns would be this with your bite, or these are the pros and these are the cons with each, with each of those. Patients want to have choice architecture, which means that you are presenting treatment options in a way that helps them make informed decisions and allows them to be an interactive part of the process. And you do that by highlighting the most relevant information and using clear and simple language in an interactive process. This is why OrthoFive Slider is so successful for patients. They, you get to turn it around and they get to physically have an interactive process to choose what is best for them. I'm going to share with you and I, I would have you write this down. This is a really powerful statement that you can share with your patients. Dr. Orthodontist does not want finances to hinder a patient having an ideal smile. Therefore, we've created treatment options to fit into every budget. My, they have options to fit into my budget. So this is the challenge that we have to have in changing what we've always done historically in thinking, no, I have to give them the perfect solution, the perfect result, because this is a part of my portfolio. I, I'm bringing insight to you on we, you know, we think how and why can these DIY solutions have grown so fast? This is why hey, we have to recognize what our patients are looking for. Now, of course, there are going to be outliers. I am not just blanketly making these statements. I'm talking about our typical patients and some parameters that we can create and provide different tiered treatment options for our patients. We do also have to recognize that as orthodontic teams, we should frame the treatment options in a way that emphasizes the benefits and the value that the patient will receive rather than simply focusing on the cost and the duration of the treatment. So for instance, an example, when you're scheduling, I love to be able to say, we have everything we need the next step is to deliver this. We can start moving your teeth on this day at this time or this day at this time, which works best for you. We are quantifying the day that we're actually going to start moving the patient's teeth. So this is actually um, emphasizing the benefits and the value of what the patient will receive and when, and not simply just focusing on the cost and the duration. As orthodontic teams, we also have to use the concept of what we call anchoring to influence the patient's perception of value. And we do this by presenting options. I typically like to start in the middle 
because I'll, I'll share here. Patients, if you look at any sales training or any financial investment training, everybody's going to say, start at the top and then start going down from there. Well, you have to recognize that we are in a relationship building industry. We're in an industry where your patients are looking for trusted advisors in an environment that is just ideal and gold standard of care. So I typically recommend providing what doctor is recommending and prescribing, which is typically probably the middle option. This is the treatment we're recommending. And then going up and presenting the higher option, which says, you know, a lot of our patients like to bundle our services together, which allows us to finance it over your treatment time. And we can do that. And this is what it includes. It might include, as I said, retainers for life and gun contouring and bleaching, or it might include the lingual options or the liner options or the 3D printed brackets. Whereas the middle option is going to be our traditional treatment that we would provide to our patient that would solve the orthodontic problem and what doctor would prescribe. And then the other option, which we'll go into in just a few minutes on some slides, I'll give you some examples some options on how you might be able to lessen what that investment might be for your patients and still allow them to have some type of an option for an orthodontic solution. So when we do this, um, it can help the patient see the value of the more affordable option and choose it over the less expensive option as well. As I said earlier, statistically, people choose the middle option. So by understanding and applying these principles of psychology, uh, you can better meet the specific needs and the value points of your patients and influence their choice of treatment options. So let's talk about the financial investment experience. I never want you to really call, reference or call it a fee quote or cost. I really like to include the word investment in this. Financial options and flexibility are imperative in orthodontics because cost is a major consideration for most families. Um, we recognize that um, flexibility in the financial options improves your patient experience and satisfaction and it increases treatment accessibility to your patients. Again, such an amazing value that the OrthoFi slider provides your patients to be able to see that. It, the whole process enhances the patient experience by providing clear and transparent pricing, flexible payment options in an interactive process where the patient can feel as the architect to their own financial arrangements. And overall, with financial options and flexibility being critical factors in providing high quality orthodontic care that really meets the needs and priorities of your patients. By offering flexible financial options, your team and your practice can really help patients overcome what those financial barriers are and access the care that they truly desire for their smile. Um, I do challenge you because so much of the time we hear back from treatment coordinators that finances is the barrier to the patient starting treatment. Well, if you don't know the truth behind the barrier to the patient starting treatment, you are unable to creatively address it and provide a solution to them. So don't be afraid to cue it up properly with your patient. Don't be afraid to say, sometimes the down payment is more important to our families and sometimes the monthly payment is more important to our families. And then this is what I love about the slider. I demonstrate it to the patient. I say, if you wanted to put this much down, this is what your monthly payment would be. Then if you wanted to put this much down, this is what your monthly payment would be. I'm really giving the patient, one, I'm validating them, that they are just like all our other patients. They are not outside of what the norm is. I want them to feel comfortable. And I want them to know that doctor does not want finances to hinder a patient having an ideal smile. Therefore, we have options to fit into every budget. That is going to be a really important message for you to deliver to your patient. It's powerful and it really helps to lower and minimize what those barriers are to the patient starting treatment. So some different options with, uh, you know, tiered pricing for orthodontic treatment typically reflects the type of treatment being offered and 
I really recommend that you keep it simple and clearly defined and transparent. So the more fluff and the more noise you start adding to these options, you, you paralyze your patients in making decisions. So you want to keep it really, really simple, really clearly defined and transparent to your patients, easy for them to be able to make a decision. You might have your silver option where it's your budget economy option. And this tier would typically involve the traditional braces. Um, and it would be a less complexity case, shoulder treatment time with some fewer appointments. Your premium option or your gold option tier uh, might be your traditional recommendations and prescription with a high level of comfort and aesthetics for your patients. And then create an elite option or your platinum option. And this would be your most expensive um, tier. And it may include custom made appliances, um, the use of virtual monitoring and appointments on demand, or allowing the patient to include the bleaching and the retainers for life and the um, you know, gum contouring, just the whole package. And when presenting this as an option, it's a really great way to be able to say a lot of our patients where this is important to them, like to take advantage of our packaged options so that we can finance it throughout their treatment time and make it as easy as possible, as achievable as possible for you. So that's also a really good messaging to influence for that. Um, as I've stated, the most commonly chosen tiered treatment and pricing option for orthodontic treatment does depend on several factors, including the patient's budget, the treatment needs, pers and personal preferences. So typically the mid-range option is a mid-priced option, and it's really the most popular treatments. They're a good balance between affordability and quality and really offering moderate treatment time, moderate number of appointments, and a moderate treatment complexity. So oftentimes though, patients might opt for that more budget-friendly option, which as I stated on the previous slide would include maybe your traditional metal braces. Um, and we would want to really understand again what the patient's language of currency, what their needs are, refer back to what, what are you looking for in an orthodontist and what's most important to you about your smile. So you know how to really customize the solutions to your patients. But ultimately, the choice of treatment and pricing option will depend on the individual patient's specific needs and preferences and should always be discussed with the doctor to determine the best course of action for your patient. Ultimately, the success of this entire process or any process you provide, any modality that you provide your patients it rests on the buy-in from your team. And any of these processes or services will really determine this, your practice's success. How your team thinks and feels is the message that they exude. So go to your team member and ask them, how do you feel about offering a tiered treatment option? As I stated earlier, write the plan together. Get your, how your team feels about it and what their understanding is because whatever they feel or think about it really is the message they will exude to your patients. I see this every day, all day. So the first place we go when we're looking to influence patients' behavior and choices is to go to the team, every single team member. Create and deliver the message from the entire, every point of interaction with your patients. Doctor does not want finances to hinder a patient having their ideal smile. Therefore, we've created options to fit into every budget. So it's really important that your team doesn't bring their own perceptions or that as a treatment coordinator, you are not assuming. You recognize, you know, your patient oftentimes can use money as the easy verbal excuse I do often challenge that because that is the easy verbal excuse. And typically there is so much more to unpack and the real reason behind the barrier to the patient starting treatment with you. Don't be afraid to ask those telling questions. Find your passion in what you provide and really understand what's the why. Help your team members see what the why is behind what you provide. 
Orthodontic teams should change your treatment recommendations to meet the needs of your patients. You can offer a range of options as we've discussed, emphasize aesthetics, convenience and comfort, use the technology that you have available to you, and most importantly, don't muddy up your options and have, have clear, easy to read, concise and transparent pricing options. And then offer your flexible payment options like what you have with OrthoFi. It is really important by taking these steps, you can better meet the changing needs of your patients and provide the best possible care and treatment options while growing your practice and targeting and reaching a broader range of patients and their needs. So let's talk about when preparing a limited or alternative treatment before presenting the full orthodontic option. Um, it's important to approach the process in a patient-centered manner by taking into account the individual needs and goals of the patient, but you need to assess those needs and explain the benefits, provide the visual aids, and explain what the full orthodontic option would be prescribed as ensuring that you're answering all of their questions and addressing all of those questions. It is really important that you can do each one of these steps because if a patient is confused or doesn't understand or doesn't get their questions answered and addressed effectively, those patients will go into your pending. And ultimately that's what we are looking to minimize. We have to recognize what the treatment goals are with your doctor, what the cost of the overhead expenses essentially are, and really what the market competition is in your area. Look to see how you can create an option that is patient, budget friendly, and how can we look and open up opportunities for potential additional treatment where I, I've observed exams where our you know, patients come in and say, I just want this straightened out or I just want this done. And they're not complex cases, but they would finish in a less than ideal result. And I do understand that many providers don't want to engage in that, but I'm challenging you to really meet your patients where they are at this point. So I've talked a lot already. I probably skipped ahead because I get so excited about what it provides our patients. But the most important process to understand is what that interactive financial investment experience is for our patients. Of course, we want to influence a same day start. Absolutely. The sooner we can get your patient vested in your practice today, the more successful you are at being able to serve that patient and have that patient be a patient of yours. However, we have options that are going to increase your conversion rate statistically, thousands and thousands of exams, this is data statistically by 18%, when we can provide open choices for your patients and when we can provide this interactive ability, even with the comfort of their own home. Now, what I can often observe is where treatment coordinators will just automatically say, you can take this home and talk it over with your husband and let me know. Don't do that. Go ahead and demonstrate it as, 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 sorry, as I stated earlier and be able to say, sometimes the monthly payment is more important to our patients. Sometimes the down payment is more important to our patients. If you wanted to put this much down, this is what your monthly payment would be. If you wanted to put this much down, this is what your monthly payment would be. And then give it to the patient and say, what works best for you? And then if the patient says, I don't know, I have to go home and talk to my husband, you can say, not a problem. I'm going to email this to you. You get to do this directly from home. And make it as easy and convenient as possible. But this is where you're removing your own perception and assumptions. Don't assume that every patient needs to go home and talk to a, patient, uh, to, uh, to a spouse. Simply demonstrate how we have this convenience and this ability to meet their needs and if and when they say they want to go home and talk to a spouse, you can just, again, talk about the convenience of how we can go ahead and email in, and absolutely, they can do that. So when we're talking about this flexibility, we have to make it affordable. We have to show and demonstrate that flexibility. It has to be transparent and combined with high-quality care and commitment to your patient satisfaction. And this is how we find success and the desired growth within your practice. By meeting the needs and expectations of your patients, you can build trust, establish long-term relationships, and grow your business.
So we have to, again, recognize that orthodontic consumers are looking for several key factors with the op financial options, such as the affordability, the flexibility, the transparency, the convenience, and then peace of mind, knowing that they have chosen the right provider for their orthodontic needs. There is really no room for interpretation. Ask telling questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions to get down into the meat of these patients' concerns and needs and set realistic expectations and approach the process in a patient-centered manner. Orthodontic teams really have the ability to help patients understand the benefits and limitations of what a limited treatment option might provide. And you can do this by supporting them and making an informed decision about their care through your education and influence. This is what helps build trust and ensure that the patient is satisfied with the treatment outcome and their experience in your practice. So have that clear communication, come up with agreements with your patients. Is this something that works for you? Excellent, that is an agreement. Or no, it doesn't, excellent. Let's discuss what actually does work for you. How can we meet your needs? Why are we committed? Visit, revisit your vision statement in your practice. Are you providing the solutions to your patients that actually fit into your vision statement? It is important that we set clear expectations. Don't be afraid to be able to say, I'm really happy that we're going to be able to meet your needs in correcting this part of your smile. Please know that this is a less than ideal prescription and this is what the result will be in this area. So setting clear expectations is what helps to control your patient's perception. Believe it or not, I've actually observed where patients cho choose um, an option that wasn't prescribed and they really kind of at the time beat up the doctor and ended up going with a different solution that was less than what the doctor provided. And then at the end, they come back and they start complaining about everything that isn't right. And this is a complete example of what happens when we don't set clear expectations don't be afraid to have a document saying, this is what we're going to be addressing. This is what we're going to be including. And then have mid-course discussions with your patients. Don't be afraid to ask the patient, sit down and say, this is what we originally decided on and targeted. How do you feel about this? Is this something that you want to go ahead and pivot and now address the other areas? And this is an opportunity where we can then recalibrate what the patient treatment option is or the additional investment at that time. You don't have to go the whole treatment time without a mid-course discussion with your patient. So when we talk about the techniques that should be used to influence your patients to start treatment today, the doctor passing the baton to the treatment coordinator is a imperative. The doctor needs to be able to prescribe the best treatment and then proceed into what needs to happen and say, look at the treatment coordinator and say, you can go ahead and get those appointments scheduled. What a great way to pass that baton. And then after the patient leaves the exam room, I don't want you as the treatment coordinator to treat this exam as an interview process. So think of it as a job interview process. How do we do? Are you going to pick us? Did I get the job? What I want you to do is to expect that that is the, your patient the minute they walk through your door. Treat them that the entire exam process because they came to you for an orthodontic solution and you have the passion and belief that you are providing the greatest solution to their orthodontic problem. You're going to give them best results, the greatest, most convenient experience. Don't treat your exam like a job interview with the patient and ensure that you are addressing any concerns and objections the patient has, such as the cost or the duration of treatment or what the discomfort might be. Offer clear and concise explanations of the benefits of starting treatment now, such as improved oral health, increased self-confidence, and better bite alignment. Remember, we didn't just grab these patients off the street. They came to us for a solution. So when we talk about the commitment of a same day start today, that we have to recognize that the patient's financial situation is a factor. How can you prepare them ahead of time? You can do that on your introduction call or even on the new patient phone call when you say, 
Please know doctor doesn't want finances to hinder a patient having an ideal smile. Therefore, we have options to fit into every budget. Make everything convenient. Say, if doctor recommends treatment at this time, we will combine as many appointments as possible to save you additional trips in. Convenience, trust, rapport between the patient and you as the orthodontic practice. These are key factors to ensure that you are delivering to facilitate that same day commitment with your patients. And then really understand how successful your exam process is. Remove your own perception. I feel like we start all our patients. I feel like our patients just are all in a financial bind right now and finances are a barrier. Dive into the data and the metrics, ensuring that you really understand what that is so that you know how to effectively make adjustments or pivot some changes to get different results. You have to remove your perception and you have to look at the data and the metrics. These statistics can help your practice refine your approach and truly optimize your efforts in serving your patients. When we talk about the strategies that we've just discussed, it really is an imperative part of the future growth of your practice because we can address and enhance your patient satisfaction. It gives you a high competitive advantage. It improves the financial stability of your practice and it expands your patient base as well. So adopting a patient-centered approach to limited or tiered treatment options is important for the future growth of your practice um, for these reasons listed. This was a really fun, I could go on all day with you guys. I know in some parts of the country, it's getting pretty late. I do wanna open it up for some questions here as well, but we did go through the history typically of what treatment recommendations were and how our consumer needs have changed and the necessity for your financial inner uh, investment to be interactive, to be able to understand the flexibility of your financial options and your treatment options. What are the best words to use to be as influential as possible? And these are all the tools that will allow you to really elevate your patient experience and the success of your practice. So without further ado, I would love to open it up for interaction with you and any questions that you might have. Great, thank you so much, Michelle. Great um, webinar, great content. And we do have a few questions. Um, there is a question, how do we overcome the patient's hesitation to invest in the premium in office treatment during, especially during the recession? How do you overcome that? So um, it's understanding what's valuable to the patient. And if a patient is going to invest in this right now, but later that's important to them because they answered that question, that telling question that looks and aesthetics are important to me. I want my bleached teeth. I've been embarrassed to smile with my lips open. It's going to be important that we hear that and we tie that into a solution for the patient to be able to say, and for only, uh, I mean, it might be an additional $39 a month for them to package the entire solution for your patient. So you have to have the ability to influence with the patients. You have to have the ability to use the verbiage that will facilitate your patients choosing that option. An example, I just, I was on site, I trained in an exam yesterday and the mom said, we're gonna pay in full. Um, we are gonna be starting, but um, I just need to talk to my husband and ensure that he's okay with this. We ended up simply by serving her and understanding her busy schedule, we collected $500 and we started her that day. And it was not high pressure sales. It was understanding her schedule, what was valuable to her, what her needs were, why she was saying she had to go home and talk to her husband. She fully knew she had two kids in the practice already. She fully knew what the cost was. Um, she already had said right away, we're starting and we're gonna pay in full. So there was something that caused her to say, I have to talk to my husband about this. So that's where we have to remove our own perception and understand what the patient's needs are. What are they really looking for? Yeah, and that kind of plays right into the next question, which is what, what are the, the telltale signs that you need to shift from that premium in office, the, the premium treatment to something else? Are there specific triggers that will come yeah. to you? 
I am a fan of putting it all out right there. I'm not a fan of covering anything up and just putting one option first. Okay, well, that doesn't work here. Well, then maybe what about this option? Personally, as a consumer, I would feel like if I had that option, why didn't you give that to me in the first place? Like, don't, don't trick me. Be transparent. Put it all out there. And that supports the message that doctor does not want finances to hinder a patient having an ideal smile or their ideal smile. These are the options that we have available to you. Uh, you know, go through the pros and cons of all of them, what, what it gives the patient, what's in it for the patient, and really say, we've got options to make this as easy as possible for you. That's our goal and commitment to you. And let them make the best decision for themselves that way. Yes, I love that. I love that, Michelle. And that's a, you know, that's a different philosophy from, from even other consultants. You know, some consultants say at some point you shift. So, um, you know, this is a real good example of why we, we like to have different perspectives on this webinar because, um, you know, I, I, love, I love that approach of putting it all on the table and, and then letting, letting it truly be in the patient's hands. Um, there are some questions around, um, and I'm going to have to jump in on this one because I have a strong opinion. Some questions around um, what is the furthest out you would allow the payments to go? Um, so before you answer that question, I, I want to answer the question from a standpoint of the data that OrthoFi has been able to collect over, over many years and over a million patients that it's not really, delinquency is not really a factor of time. It's a factor of, are they gonna pay their bills? What is their credit like? So you typically know if you're gonna have trouble with someone in the first three months. Or not. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't, you know, it's not so, so much of a matter of how far out are you willing to go? How are they paying in this first month? So that's my, I just wanna say that based on the data that we have, but Michelle, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Well, I mean, this is a perfect example, Marla, of why ortho processes and what you provide. You have the consistency, you have the processes in place um, that can allow and protect the practice from that risk. This is the flexibility that we talk about. However, the transparency in that is to say, you know, not tie the monthly payments to time and treatment. That's really important because if the patient's perception is that they're tied together and you finish sooner or you extend it and the message wasn't clear to them, then they're going to not, you know, lose compliance with that. But again, practices are protected by what OrthoFi provides them and the service that you do. So, um, I, I think that you have a lot more flexibility with OrthoFi. Typically, without OrthoFi, I don't recommend extending too much. I mean, I'll recommend a couple of months past their treatment time, but and always on auto pay. But that's, I think, just proves why it's so valuable to have essentially an army behind the practice protecting those financials. Right. Okay. So, you know, so just to kind of recap that. You know, Michelle would say if you're not using, I think what I heard you say is if you're not using OrthoFi, probably a couple months would be kind of the outlier. Um, that's how far you should go a couple months beyond treatment. If you are using OrthoFi, you do have some, a, a awesome. full team to support you on that. So you could go out a little further. Yeah. Um, these are some questions I'm not sure they're 100% related to the topic, but I know okay. everyone's excited to have your expertise. Um, what is the average amount of time that a doctor should spend in the new patient exam before <laughs> leaving it to the TC? Conversion rates go down, and I have this data, conversion rates go down when doctors are in the exam room longer than 10 minutes. So we recommend less than 10 minutes, preferably around seven. Now, there's some really successful when you get to two or three minutes. So I'm not saying that it's you have to get to seven. I'm saying don't go over and the reason being is because doctors are very, very smart, very, very educated. They have a lot of information to give, and oftentimes it's too much for the patients. Now, this is, again, there's outliers. There's surgical cases that, that you know, you, we do need to have that, disc that extended discussion and expertise. Um, in a traditional setting, it should be less than 10 minutes, preferably around seven. Okay, and one other 
totally irrelevant question. <laughs> Could you give us your opinion on courtesies and discounts? Um, I would love more about that. I, I think uh, I don't like the word discounts. I like the word courtesies. And I, uh, I don't really know what you want to know about that. I think that we provide, just like with our slider on ortho five, we, they have a lot of flexibility and, and courtesies and paying different ways. And I feel that a family courtesy is something that's really valuable. Don't mix courtesies. Um, I really love in a marketing program to use first responders and teachers to provide them even a 10% courtesy. So I'm not really sure what the question is on how I feel about him. Yeah. Yep. I think it was just, you know, in general, like, you know, what, how, how often should they do that? What, you know, should that be a part of their, their offer? Oh, um, I do want to add Marla, actually don't add courtesies to try to influence a different decision from your patient at the end. Oh, well, I can do this. If you do that, no, that's trickery. And if you could offer it that now you could have offered it back then. So I don't believe in that. I don't believe in price matching. Um, your services, your treatment fees are based on complexity of treatment, results expected, and appliances used. That's that is what it is. So yeah, yeah. And don't try to play the price game. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Okay. Um, so we do have a, a few more questions, but we are out of time. So we will um, try to answer those questions individually to some of the people. Um, Michelle, if you don't mind stopping sharing your screen. Sure. And um, hopefully Lauren can can grab a snag and share a screen for us. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. And I also want to mention um, that this series, the Industry Expert Series, we do have more coming. We'll take a pause for a little while in the summer. We have one more before we wrap things up for the summer. And then um, we will, um, you know, so, so we have this one more coming up before summer. And then we'll start back in September. Um, so if you want to register for this last one, and then you'll see lots more coming out about the future webinars. And then Lauren, if you'll go to the next screen, I also want to say um, we would love to um, provide a demo for any of you who are interested in learning more about Ortho5. And if you sign up, you know, based on a demo from this webinar, we're going to give you $2,000 off your setup fee. And the first three practices that sign up will actually get 50% off their implementation fee. Also want to mention that Michelle and her team would be wonderful additions to your practice. If you want to, um, you know, reach out to her or if you didn't get her contact information, reach out to us and we'll share that with you um, if you'd like to work more closely with Michelle. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Fantastic you. job. And we we'll look forward to you joining us again sometime soon. And thank you all. We appreciate you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.